I'm Tony Northrup, and I'm going to show you how to look at just about any portrait or fashion picture and kind of reverse engineer the lighting setup. So now if you're waiting in line at the grocery store and your phone is dead or something, you can look at the magazine covers and <laughs> it'll help you figure out. You can learn a little bit about lighting by looking at any picture. I have a bunch of Vogue covers here. We're just going to look at them and go through them. This first one, Lena Dunham, uh, I can tell that she has a big light and it's positioned off camera right, a little bit up high, and it's a big light source. And I don't see any other lights. I think it's a one light shoot or maybe there's a reflector for a little bit of fill. So let me tell you why I can see that. First, let's just look at her face. Let's divide her face in half. We can see camera right, that side of her face is far brighter than camera left. So that tells me the light source is off to the side here. I can also see kind of like look at this shoulder and look down here. You can see this is brighter than here. So we can, that gives us some sense for light fall off because the farther something is from a light, the less light it's going to pick up unless that light happens to be a laser and it's really, really focused. For the most part, light fades as it gets further away. Um, it fades off faster the closer the light is to the subject. So that's another good way you can kind of tell the how close or far a light is. Uh, a really easy way to tell exactly what the shape of the light is, is just to really check out the eyes. And if we zoom in here, we it, this tells us exactly what light they're using. It looks like an octobox, right? You can even see the shape of the light reflected in both of her eyes. And do we see any other lights in there? Well, I don't see any other lights, but what I do see is, see this little bit of brightness here? To me, that looks like somebody has a big white card or a reflector or something, and they're just bouncing in a little bit of fill. And if I was the photographer on this shoot, I would have started with this one softbox or parabolic or whatever it is. And I would have looked at it and I would have looked at the shadows and I would have said, hey, those shadows, they're a little too contrasty. I think we need a little bit of fill. Um, the fill, you can't always see in the reflections of the light. But if it's a true one light shoot, then the shadows will just be completely black. Almost always, there's some amount of light either bouncing around the room deliberately uh, or or that bouncing in the room accidentally, or somebody has some sort of fill that they're bouncing in to fill in the shadows. Because for the most part, you don't want completely black shadows. This does not have completely black shadows. So I do think there uh, was a, a second card in there reflecting some light up from that main soft box and kind of giving us this fill. I You might wonder, does she have a light on the backdrop? And this is kind of hard to say for sure. I don't think there is a backdrop light because look how much darker the backdrop is than her. And the backdrop would be picking up some amount of light. The reason I'm not entirely sure is if you look in the upper left corner of the backdrop, you can see this is brighter than it is down here. And that could be that there is a light pointed at the backdrop up here just to provide so the backdrop isn't completely flat. On the other hand, this looks like a painted backdrop. So it could just be that this is part of how the backdrop was painted, that it's a little brighter. Let's go on to the next picture. And right away, you can see this is a drastically different set of lights. Uh, and in fact, it's pretty clear that this is a one light shoot. The shadows here are very dark. You can see just how far, how quickly the, the shadows fall off. And if we zoom in, we see one very round little spot. And what that means to me is it's probably a beauty dish. It could be any sort of round light source. It's kind of impossible to tell if it's just a, a round parabolic. It's probably a beauty dish. Um, it's small, which means it could be a very small light source, like a flash with a round head on it. And that light source might be up close, or it could be a big light source that happens to be far away, something like the sun, right? The sun is far away. Um, I think the photographer here was trying to simulate sunlight without kind of uh, having to put up with the harshness of the sun because the light source is, looks a lot bigger than the sun typically is as it's reflected in the eye. Uh, a photographer might not want to use sunlight because you can't depend on the sun. Like they scheduled this person in on a particular day and they don't know if it's going to be cloudy or whatever. And hence, the reason you might want to just simulate sunlight in a studio. Uh, we can see that the model is close to the backdrop because there's very perfect outline of the shadow behind her. Even if I couldn't see her eyes or her face, I can look at the shadow and know that it's a very hard light source. So small light sources, light sources that are far away are going to be very hard. Look at the 
line of the shadow here, how crisp it goes. There, there is no fall off of the light. If we go back to Lena, Lena Dunham here, you can see the light as it falls across her face is very gradual. Even the line of her chin here, she has a a chin like other humans do and that it, it, it's not furry or anything. So you can see this hard line of the chin is casting a soft shadow, which means it's a big light source that's wrapping around the subject. This is a small light source. Her chin is casting a very hard line. So right away, you can look at this and know, okay, the light source is um, off to camera right and a little bit high up. The placement of the light source on the eye tells you the placement of the light itself. You can kind of draw a little cross on the eye here. Let's zoom in even tighter. And as we look at this eye, if you draw a cross here, you can see it's in the upper right corner. That means that the light itself is in the upper right. If the light reflection was in the bottom half of the eye, the light would be down low and reflecting up. Um, and because it's in the camera right side of her eye, you know that the light itself is off to camera right. Here is another model. And let's just look at the eye first. Here we can see the light source is almost perfectly on axis. It's almost perfectly lined up with the camera, but it's a little bit off to the left, just a tiny bit off to the left. Maybe the photographer wanted it dead on, but they had the light stand in front of them or something. So maybe they shifted off a little bit to the right. Uh, another way we can tell that the light source is off to camera left is if you look at the, sh the shadow underneath her nose, see how it slides off a little bit to the left. It's not perfectly symmetrical. Uh, and we can kind of get a good sense for the hardness of the light by looking at the quality of the fall off of the shadows. Underneath her nose, you can see it's not a hard light like it was here. Look at the light under her nose here, perfectly crisp. This is a very hard light. This light is a little bit softer. And in fact, look at the catch light in her eyes. It's pretty small. Here, the catch light in her eyes is a little bit bigger. I don't know how big this light source is. I can't perfectly tell that, but I can tell that either the light source is bigger on this photo or the light source, it could be the same light source, but a little bit closer because it's the relative size of the light source that's going to determine these properties, like how, how harsh the lines of the shadows are, what the fall off of the light is. Um, and by the way, especially as you're learning portrait photography, you often learn to put your subjects in soft light because hard light like this is typically unflattering, but hard light actually looks awesome. It's just that you need heavy makeup and a perfect face if you're going to pull it off. Because as you look at this kind of hard light, you see hard shadows like this below her lip. If she had any, uh, if she had a pimple over here, that pimple would be casting a hard light, a hard shadow, just like her nose is, and it would be upsetting. You can see, look at the shadows from her eyelashes even. Uh, so if you were to bring a human into a studio, you probably would want to soften the light up a little bit. They have models, they have professional makeup people who can hide any blemishes. And then they probably go in and retouch stuff in Photoshop too, just in case there is an imperfection. So hard light plus perfect face and lots of makeup creates an amazing effect, a very powerful sort of fashion effect, but it might not be what you'd want to use for regular human beings. Uh, again, as we look at this picture, I don't see any light on the backdrop. We can see her face is much brighter than the backdrop. So the backdrop is gray. It appears gray here. It's probably a white backdrop that's not getting enough light and thus it's dark white, which people call gray. <laughs> Let's look at the next picture. This picture again, I'm starting easy with you here, giving you like very simple light sources. Uh, if we look at the catch light in her eye, we can see it's almost dead center. It's a little bit camera right and up. And we can confirm that by looking at the shadow un underneath her chin. So this is a look that's intended to look like an uh, on a camera flash. It's intended to give that paparazzi look because that's what a paparazzi would do, right? They'd be walking around with a uh, flash connected to their camera. Those flashes are always usually above the camera. Um, of course, it's a vertical shot. So if you had it attached to the camera, the flash would probably be out to the side unless you had a bracket or something, but they wanted it above the flash. It's probably not attached to the camera. They're probably shooting on a $30,000 camera with some nice pro photo lights or something. Um, if we look at the light underneath her chin here, we can see it's very hard. And you know, I, if I look closely at her eye, it looks like there's a little reflection of something else here. This right here is probably a little bit of a reflector or a card meant to fill in the shadows a little bit, but there's not a lot of fill because these shadows are really harsh and uh, almost completely black. 
Let's look at the next picture. This one I put in here to get a little more complicated on you guys, all right? Now, we can start with the exact same rules that we were looking at before. Like, let's look at her eyes and what do we see? Well, we do see a light off to camera left here. That's that one specular highlight. If we look at this eye, we get a little more information. We can kind of see, you see a light and then you see this shape here. So I think they have a strobe off camera left right about uh, maybe a little bit higher than the camera, but at about the same level since it's barely in the top half of her eye. But there's also a big white card here, um, a reflector of some kind that's bouncing some light in. Um, the light here is really complex and not at all like Vogue. I had to dig really deep to find any Vogue cover that had backlighting. Vogue almost always uses just front lighting and usually just a single light. They tend to keep their light sources really, really simple. And I think this is some sort of like wedding special magazine. And so maybe they didn't get the same photographer that they usually do. Um, look at the weird highlight that she has on her nose. See, this is just completely hard, but also part of it is cast in shadow. So what's casting this shadow on her nose here? Well, it's it's this side of her face. You can see this side of her face is completely blown out. Um, and this side of her face is much, much darker. So we know the main light source is off to the right. And as we look in at the catch light, we can see, yeah, there's a big light source over here that's casting this light in. Um, so why would she have this weird shadow on her nose where part of the shadow is cast by her face? Well, the light's actually behind her a little bit. It's probably pretty much even with her, but a little bit behind the model, off to camera right and pointing in at her. And that's creating a couple of interesting effects. Um, because it's behind her, it's creating a rim light effect. You can see, yeah, it's lighting up her whole, this whole side of her face here and along her chin here. Um, but we also see that this whole part of her neck has just disappeared into the white background, right? And people use lights behind models as rim lights to, to th create a thinning effect because by making parts of her body visually disappear into the background, there's less of her body to see and it generally makes you thinner. Not that she would need or want that, but that's what the photographer did. Um, another way that I can tell that this light is behind her a little bit is if you look at this light here, you can see it's wrapping around her arm and coming in towards the camera. If the light were just off camera right and even with the model, like in the same plane of focus as the camera, uh, 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 in the same plane of focus from the point perspective of the camera, then this would part of her arm would just be in shadow. But something is lighting this part of her arm and it's not coming from this. Um, I will say when you work in a white backdrop like that, there's definitely light on the backdrop. As you can see, the backdrop is really bright here and it fades off here. So there is a light that's hitting this and it's probably the same light that's hitting her here and that's hitting her arm here. Uh, but the backdrop itself becomes a light source anytime it's lit because they're very reflective. So if you have a solid white backdrop, you necessarily have a bunch of backlighting because that same light that's reflecting off the backdrop and coming at your camera, is going to be lighting up the back of the model. Now, there is a light source off to camera left, but if we look at the left side of her body here, the camera left side of her body, it's much darker than the camera right side of her body. Let's move on. All right, getting a little bit of, a little old school here. As we zoom in, we can actually see two lights, one larger light source, and then a smaller light source right below her. Uh, this does not look, the smaller light source does not look big enough to be a reflector. So I think they probably used a flash as fill, some small light source. And the bigger light source uh, and the top half of her eye there looks, it looks round. It looks fairly small. So that probably means a beauty dish, though I can't tell if it is a, a some small parabolic or an umbrella or something necessarily. Um, and we can kind of see this reflected in the shadows, you know, the upper, the higher light source is more powerful. Thus the shadow is being cast down instead of being cast up, which you probably wouldn't want. Um, but the shadows are not completely black. That's because we have that second lower light source that's adding in a little bit of fill. There doesn't seem to be a background light because as I said before, there's no light creeping in from the sides. There's no rim lighting and the backdrop itself is gray and not bright white. So it's probably just catching light from the main light. She has really interesting light and we can see it from her eyes. Um, so we see kind of one main light source here, the key light, and it looks round. So it could be a uh, parabolic or a softbox or a beauty dish or something, but it's, it's big. And notice that there's a little section cut out 
of the round catch light. It's not perfectly round. Um, so something is blocking part of the round shape. And I bet you anything, it's the photographer. I bet the photographer is just partially standing in front of the light and wouldn't substantially change the quality of the light, but it does change the catch light. Also below that key light, we see this other little catch light here. And that is whatever they used for fill. It could be a strip light. It could be one of those trifold reflectors that you hold low. Um, it's kind of impossible to tell if it's a, a light source or just a reflector, but it's almost as bright as the main light. So I'm going to guess that it's a light source, uh, like just a strip light. And you can see here, the shadows themselves are pretty soft. Look at the, the fall off of the light, uh, the shadow cast from her chin, the shadow underneath her, uh, the shadows underneath her nose and the chin here fall off pretty softly. They're not harsh lights like we saw over here. So it's a soft light source, which means it's either big or very close to the subject or some combination thereof. Um, you can also see in the reflections of her lips, kind of the sorts of light sources that we're seeing. Let's look at a picture of Adele. Here we see very soft light right away, right? You don't have to look at the eyes. You can see underneath her chin, underneath her nose, there are no harsh shadows. Without looking at her eyes, I can see the light is off to camera right because this side of her face, divide her face in half, this side of her face far brighter than this side of her face. We're talking like three or four stops brighter. So the light is definitely coming from over here. Much of her face is actually in shadow, but those shadows are not black. In fact, there's a lot of light in the shadow, even in the dark side of her face here, you can still see the definition in her hair, which means there's plenty of fill. Now we zoom into the eyes and we can kind of confirm this. See this kind of highlight on this side of her iris, see the same light reflected over here. That means there's a ton of fill reflecting light back in. And yeah, we have one big light source and something else under here. So most of the light is big, and close and then there's a bunch of fill coming in and that generally creates a very soft light now uh, adele is not a model so it's probably more flattering for them to use a sort of soft light than uh, a hard light that they might use on a, a proper fashion model here we have jennifer lawrence and again she's not a fashion model and they photographed her under soft light more natural light and in fact if you look at this picture First, there's something in the foreground here that maybe they're shooting through glass or they've just added something to create this kind of front bouquet look, which makes the picture feel candid. Um, but if we look at the light sources, we can actually see multiple different kinds of shadows. Like there's this shadow coming in off of her face. There's these kind of soft shadows coming in over here, which to me means there's multiple light sources or one like multi-part light source. And I don't see any light coming from behind her. Uh, the background is lit in some way, but I don't see, you know, the edges of her hair aren't really glowing. All this is very soft. So let's zoom into the eyes and get confirmation of this. And as we zoom way in, you can see she actually looks like natural light. <laughs> they don't have very many Vogue photos, Vogue covers that are natural light, but this definitely is. We can actually see the people working on the set and the like huge windows that are actually lighting her. This might be a reflector of some kind that they put in just to add a little fill and soften the light a little bit. Um, anytime I'm in a building and I see a big bank of windows like that where the light might be coming through either directly or indirectly, I think this is gonna be a great light source. And in fact, our kitchen is kind of like that and that's why we shoot so much. Another Vogue photo here, this one's a real layup. You can see two light sources up and then a fill light. And this is kind of confirmed when you look at the the soft shadows and um, you know the fact that the shadows aren't black. This one again, a real layup. This looks like a single beauty dish. It's fairly small, moderately sized. It's round, it's above the eye and just a little bit off to the left again, because the photographer probably didn't want to be directly behind the light. Uh, there's almost no shadow under her nose. And that's because, well, for one, the light source is really low and close to the camera, but they probably also have some fill. And as we look at the eye, you can see the lower part of her iris is really well lit. That can also be from post-processing, but in this case, I do think that there's quite a bit of fill just to prevent the shadow underneath her, her nose from being in there. Um, but at the same time, the light source is pretty hard because we do have uh, like almost these total shadows that are being cast by her hand where it becomes almost completely black. And if we look at her arm here, you can see the 
light source is completely fading off. The background itself is gray, so there doesn't seem to be any background light. So because the, the fall off is so steep, I think this light source is really close to her. I, you know, it could be just a foot away, just outside of camera reach and the photographer might be a little bit further back because I can see it's taken with more of a telephoto lens and not a wide angle lens, just from the proportions of her face. Um, look at the background and look at the foreground. She is so much brighter than the background. And this can tell you one of two things, either the background is way behind the subject uh, or the background is maybe twice or three times further from the subject than the light source. So is the light source here uh, close or far away? Well, if it were far away, then the amount of light falling on our foreground subject and the background would be pretty much equal. But if the light source is fairly close, if this background is three feet away and the light source is three feet away, then the light fall off to the background is going to be pretty steep. Um, so I think this light source is actually really close and that explains why the background itself is so much darker. Um, the light here is really nice. I know it's a full body shot, which is different from these headshots. So the photographer needed to do something to light the dress up like this. I can see the light source is mostly higher up because her dress down here gets darker than the dress here, which means this part is further than this part. I can also see from the shadows cast on her dress that it's the light source is a little bit camera right, but is mostly on access because there are shadows on both sides. If it were completely off to the right, then the whole right side of the dress would be lit up, but they wanted to kind of uh, show the three-dimensional form of the dress. So they lit it kind of in the middle so that we'd see the light fall off on both sides. Um, let's look at her arm here. We can see on her camera left arm here, it just goes completely dark. So there's no light coming in from here at all. But on the right, we can actually see some rim lighting. So she's being hit hard from camera right, really lighting up this arm. This helps to separate it from the background. See how this stands out from the background, whereas this shoulder just kind of disappears into the background. That's the benefit of this kind of rim lighting. If we really get into her eye, we can kind of double check this. And and what we see is, oh, there's a lot of light, right? It actually looks like there's reflectors all around here um, below the camera and off to camera left, and then one main light source off to camera right that's really lighting her up. Um, I think in addition to that main light source, they might have a, a light off to camera right, even a little bit behind her that is hitting this arm just to add that nice uh, rim light that we see all along the arm because this, it, it sure looks like it's coming from behind the camera we wouldn't see, or behind the model rather, because it it is uh, just rim lighting. It is just outlining her arm. So multiple light sources on this one, kind of a complex picture. Uh, what beautiful light we have here. She has very fair skin. So the reflectiveness of her skin and the lightness of her skin really separates her from the background. Even though she's right against the background, her face is picking up all the light and reflecting it back. And additionally, there might've been some dodging or burning or something. We can see the light is off to camera left because of course this side of her face is darker. I'd probably call this narrow lighting because it's primarily lighting the side of her face that's facing away from the camera. If it were over here and lighting up this part of her face, you'd call it broad lighting. But for the most part, photographing women, especially in fashion, uh, you use narrow lighting just so it makes their face seem a little bit thinner usually. Um, if we look in at the catch lights here, we see a really big, what looks like a soft box or a parabolic off the camera left and, you know, draw little crosshairs on her eye. And you can see it's it's above the middle, the middle line, which means it's above the camera and it's off to camera left. And, you know, looking at the shadows, the fall off here is so soft. There is complete darkness here. So it probably is mostly a one light source. You know, the room isn't flooded with light, but the light source itself is pretty huge. Um, and in fact, the big light sources like this can steal a lot of definition from the face. So especially as we look at the left side of her face here, it's almost overexposed. You don't really see any shadow underneath her cheekbone. And the, the softness of the light doesn't give you the definition of say, um, let's find one of these pictures, like here where there is a more distinct uh, shadow line. Okay, this was an interesting shoot. Let's look right in at the eye. We can see what looks like 
uh, a beauty dish or a parabolic above and again, slightly off to camera left, but just a little bit. Um, look at the shadow on our nose and we can see the light itself goes off towards camera right. So we know it is off to camera left. This side of her face is much brighter than this side. You can see this part of her neck is in shadow, whereas this part is lit up. Um, there's a really steep fall off. So I think the light for her is really pretty close. Um, and look, look at the fall off on her face. Like look how much brighter this part of her face is than this part, even though this part's not in shadow. And then look at her jeans. Um, her jeans here would be completely dark except that there's a second light coming in from somewhere and lighting this up. Um, and in fact, we can see kind of from the shadows on her hand here, look how the shadows here don't necessarily match the shadow under her nose. This is coming in from camera left and this shadow is coming in from a light source on camera right. So because we see shadows going in different directions, we know that there are multiple light sources. You can kind of look closely for that. Um, I will say one of the things that can throw off this technique is photoshopping. Sometimes photographers will even comp together pictures. Uh, I don't think Vogue would probably be this sloppy about it, but if you see something that's completely illogical, just know that it could be that somebody put a fake catch light in an eye or moved a catch light or changed the shape of a catch light, or they blended multiple pictures together, taken with different combinations. But in this case, I think we just have a, a couple of different light sources, one off to camera left and then one off to, uh, light up the rest of her body here, just so that the lighting on her body is a little more even, no light on the background. You can see it just falls off. Uh, really interesting picture here. And looking at her eyes, you can see a couple of different light sources. Look at the shadow on her nose. Most of the shadow is going off to camera left and you can see the brightest, the key light here is very slightly off to camera right. Uh, this is, there are no hard shadows here though. The, the light fall off from her nose is very, very soft. Like look how gradual the shadow goes from the deepest part of the shadow to the lightest part of the shadow. So it's a big and close light source, right? And then from this other catch light, we can see they added in a little bit of fill and they probably wanted to make sure that this uh, far side of her arm and body were lit up. The photographer definitely needed to make sure that some texture was caught in this dress because it's a dark dress, which means, well, they're lighting her face, but they probably also had to put some amount of light on the dress where they had to, to dodge the shadow some to make sure that they didn't disappear in blackness. Um, this sure looks like a natural light shoot, right? After all, we have this natural outdoor background. Her eyes uh, are, you know, very evenly lit with catch lights. We don't see the, see the shape of a beauty dish in particular, um, but there is definitely some light source here and it looks like a bunch of fill. And also I know this is not the light you get in the shadows of a city. So this is definitely artificial light, but it's so soft with almost no shadow under her chin, just the tiny amount of separation between the light on her face and the light underneath her neck here. The brightness here is almost the same. This is like one, one and a half stops in difference. So the light itself is very soft. They just kind of filled everything with light. Um, it's a very beautiful and kind of ethereal effect, but of course it does hide some of the definition in her cheekbones. And so you can see the makeup artist maybe put a little extra blush there to bring some of that definition back so her face didn't appear to just be completely flat. Um, that's the kind of thing you have to think about, like the makeup and the, the lighting kind of need to complement each other. Here we have Rihanna, this picture, I found the original image, this later would become the cover. And it's interesting because if you look closely, they, they took this out of the cover shot, but you can see all the different people working on the set and the reflection on the glass here. So it looks like she's just casually chilling out on a fence in this fancy dress, but no, you have a whole team of people working to make her look good. If we go in tight on her eyes, we can see there's a main key light off to camera right and then a whole bunch of fill here. And this is kind of proven by the shadows that her chin is casting. Here we have it falling to almost complete darkness, um, but the lighting itself is pretty even. You know, this shoulder is much more lit than this shoulder, which means confirms to me that the light is coming in from camera right. So, you know, one main light off to the right and a bunch of fill light. Uh, this is an interesting light setup because look, at the reflections on her skin here. She has a, the makeup artist put on like something a little bit reflective, like a little bit of sheen or something, you know, they didn't powder her to death. Um, but at the same time, 
Um, it, it doesn't look like it's no makeup. Like there's definitely makeup on here, but the light fall off is pretty incredible and it makes a really interesting effect. We see these just specular highlights right along her face here from obviously from the catch light two main light sources. Uh, they look to be different. Like one is completely round and maybe one has a little bit of shape to it. Uh, or maybe they're the same. They could just be two parabolics or two beauty dishes. And then we see a specular highlight on her shoulder here because it's so close to the to the light. Um, I'm guessing the light sources are pretty close to her because just look how steeply the light falls off and how much brighter this shoulder is than this shoulder. Uh, just that little bit of difference in distance between her shoulders is enough to make the light fall off. You know, maybe it's three stops or so. And one more Vogue cover before I give my voice a rest. Here we see deep, deep shadows, um, but an overall soft light. You know, there is no perfect darkness in here. You can still see her neck, even though it's almost all in shadow. So that tells me that there's some sort of fill. The background itself is darker than her face, but it's not quite that dark gray that I feel like I would see from the light. So I think there's probably some very even light coming in uh, across the backdrop, but not a whole lot of light as we zoom in. You know, you can see one big, big, big light source. That is a huge catch light in her eyes. And that's why we see this super soft kind of ethereal light. I love big light sources like that, but you know, if you get, it, it could be like a six foot parabolic or something like this. The light source for this is definitely something like this. They can be very, very expensive and they take up a whole lot of room in your studio. So you're probably not gonna put it in your little living room setup, um, but you could also simulate it by getting a smaller light source and trying to get really, really close. But the way you get that sort of light is by getting a big expensive light and getting close. Uh, I'm gonna show you the photo from our cover of the Lightroom book there. Lightroom, our Lightroom book will teach you all you need to know about um, organizing and doing light editing on your pictures. And we have a video that you can watch in our best of video playlist but you can see from looking at the catch light that we use an array of lights kind of in a star pattern pointing out from the middle. And this pretty much reveals all of our secrets, right? I don't see any other fill or anything in there. Um, you can see from the light fall off on her face that the light is very much on axis. You know, you can see she's kind of glowing from the middle here and it falls off really quickly across her cheeks and her ear here is much, much darker, like three, four stops darker than her face. And because that light fall off is so steep, I know the light is really, really close. And even behind her head, like look at the the little outfit here versus the outfit here. The light fall off is so steep that I know the light source was just right against those things. And indeed, because I took the picture, I know the light source was only like a foot away from her face. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. If you want to learn more about photography, especially using different light sources, if you didn't understand the difference between beauty dishes and softbox and strip lights and all that, it is in chapter six of my book, Stunning Digital Photography. If you want to learn all the post-processing tricks, check out our Lightroom and Photoshop books. And if you want to learn uh, what types of light sources to buy, like whether you should buy the Pro Photo strobes or the Godox strobes, check out my photography buying guide here. They're all available at scp.io slash store or just search for Tony Northup at Amazon. Thanks so much. And if you have any follow-up questions or suggestions on how to reverse engineer lights, write a comment down below and subscribe for free videos. Thanks and bye.